The 4K Blu-ray of the two towers has a fantastic use of HDR, occasionally even exceeding 2000 nits, but certain segments of the movie suffer from very obvious digital noise reduction. Let me show you. Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. Before I start to go into the HDR and the white color gamut or WCG side of things, I just wanted to say that I'm quite disappointed with the amount of digital noise reduction and also H enhancement that is present in this movie. And obviously this is one of the best trilogy of all time, but in terms of the two towers, if I can show you this conversation between Legolas and also King Theoden when Aragorn fell down the cliff, you can see very obvious smearing effect on both their faces. And if I were to hold an online seminar discussing the evils of digital noise reduction or DNR, then this would probably be an example that I would use because it is classic, it is textbook. When their faces are moving, you can see the smearing and the digital noise reduction just erasing away all the fine detail and texture, making it a very smooth wax-like appearance. But once you know the faces become stationary or stops for a while, then the texture comes back, creating a really strange digital effect. And if you look at this scene here, you can see that as the flag flies away, you know, it looks so fake and artificial that I don't even know what to say. The whole sequence is devoid of any film grain, making it look like it was shot on video rather than the organic filmic cinematic look that we all really like when watching a movie. And there are examples of very obvious sharpening and also clear upscaling from a non-4K source in other scenes as well, making the whole movie look quite digital and not film-like. But let's get into the HDR side of things, and what I'm going to do is to use a Panasonic UB9000 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray player to read the static HDR10 metadata. Obviously, this movie is available in Dolby Vision, but we are just going to be reading the HDR10 base layer for the moment. And you can see that the maximum light level or max CLL is put at 827 nits, whereas the maximum frame average light level or max FALL is 329 nits. And the maximum luminance is 4000 nits, which means that you know this should be graded on a 4000 nit pulsar. And if we can go into the first scene where I found some interesting bright objects to look at, you can see that as Aragorn, Legolas, and also Gimli are chasing down the Urukhai who has captured the two hobbits, you can see that the sun here reached around 700 nits. And then if we can go to the next really bright scene, when Gandalf the White revealed himself to the three hunters again, the brightness actually is quite consistent at around 1000 nits and occasionally even exceeding it, probably close to 2000 nits. And it really gives the fantastic HDR impact that we've come to expect from such a fabulous scene. And then if we go to the next sequence, after Gandalf has defeated Balrog, as the camera zooms in on his eye, the glint of his pupil reached around 1200 nits, and then and as the sequence faded to white, it reached around 900 nits. Next, what we are going to do is to go to another portion of the film where you can see Gollum fetching some wild delicacies to Frodo, and the sun rays coming through the leaves exceeded 1000 nits. And another interesting segment that I wanted to analyze was obviously the battle at Helm's Deep. And the colorist or the production team kept the peak brightness at around 500 nits, including the flame torches, until the lightning flashes. And you can see it being really bright, reaching even close to 2000 nits to give that sort of impact that you know HDR is meant to bring. 
And finally, we turn our attention to the scene where Gandalf leads a charge down Helm's Deep and the blinding sun rays reach around 2000 days and even beyond when you take into account the specular highlight reflections of the horses and the spears and the weapons and stuff <laughs> even reaching maybe 3500 nits giving that sort of tremendous immersion and realism that is simply beyond what SDR can offer. Next, we are going to analyze the white color gamut or WCG use. And I think the WCG use in the two towers is more generous than what we found in the first film, which is the Fellowship of the Ring. So you can see in the shot here, as I place the cursor on Sauron's eye, it exceeded Rec 709. And then if I move the cursor to the volcano again, it exceeded Rec 709 near the red orange region. And then in another frame here, when I place the pixel value checker on the Canon DPV 2411 on these leaves here, they clearly exceeded Rec 709 going into P3 green. And then if we go to another shot of Liv Tyler caressing her pillow, you can see that the hue of the pillow exceeded Rec 709. And in another random shot of Aragorn just like wandering listlessly on his horse, and if we place the pixel value checker cursor on these bushes here, they exceeded Rec 709 as well. So I would say that WCG is sprinkled in more liberally in the two towers than in the first film. So to sum up, I really like the HDR and WCG use in this movie, but I just got put off really by the amount of digital noise reduction and also enhancement that is present in this film. And I think, you know, <laughs> me being a purist and a video enthusiast, I think it is very difficult for me to accept that this film is a reference movie. So uh, although I would still think this movie is worth buying because of the HDR and WCG use, and especially the Dolby Atmos soundtrack, I think, you know, if you are a purist, you probably will never accept this film as, you know, a good showcase of what an old film can look like when you take into account the amount of digital noise reduction and really unnecessary digital noise reduction that is present in this movie. If you'd like to watch some of our other technical 4K Blu-ray analysis, I've created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it and I will see you in the next video.